On this week's GTA 5 O'Clock, GTA Online is finally revealed. We travel to Rockstar North to see a 50 minute demo. Release date, info, features, everything you need to know. It's a massive exclusive. It's this week's GTA 5 O'Clock. Hello, welcome to this very special edition of GTA 5 O'Clock. I'm Tim Weaver, I'm here with Dan Dawkins. Hello Dan. Yeah, hi there. So, very exciting episode ahead, Dan. Why don't you tell the world why? Uh, well, we'll tell the world why. Uh, we cryptically said uh, two weeks ago that Tim and I were going on holiday. A lot of people speculated about where we were going, and it wasn't just for a romantic vacation to the seaside. Although that would have been nice, obviously. That, I mean, that, that would have been nice in many ways. But no, we went in a plane to Scotland, to Edinburgh, to the offices of Rockstar North, the creators of GTA V. We were among the first people in the world to see GTA Online. Now, today we're going to outline everything that GTA Online is. It's really pretty incredible given what people's expectations are. If you've listened to the show, you will have in fact had the heads up because we've been pretty accurate with our predictions for what it was along the line. But yeah, Tim and I are going to talk about our experiences of going to Rockstar North, um, what we saw in the demo of GTA Online, which is a 50 minute live demo, like almost an hour in fact, plus in a later show, we'll be talking about our exclusive interview, again, almost an hour long, with Rockstar North President Leslie Benzies, that was absolutely packed full of brilliant stuff, too much to even fit in today. So I will say, if you subscribe to us now, if you don't already, you'll be making sure you don't miss any of that content coming up in the upcoming days and weeks. So much stuff to put out there, plus follow us on at GTA Via Clock. I should definitely underline just how massive this is because Rockstar North never invite people up up to their up to the Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, Dan. Uh, no, absolutely not. And so I think just the idea of even going up to Rockstar North was a big deal and pretty exciting. And I've certainly never been there in like almost a decade of professional games journalism, you know, mm. whatever that means. And um, <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. And again, I've never had the chance to interview Leslie Benzies. It was just a really exciting, you know, experience. And that's even without knowing you were going to see GTA Online. Okay, well, you know, we'll get to it. What is GTA Online? I think the shock is, for a lot of people, if you said GTA 5 has no online mode, that would almost be correct, because GTA Online, in Rockstar's eyes, is all, you know, effectively a standalone experience. Um, and it's, it's like we've rumoured, it's a persistent online GTA universe where you enter into it, you grow, you build stats, you buy things, you take part in missions. Basically everything you do in single player GTA 5, you can do in online GTA 5 in exactly the same world with no compromise. And we're gonna run through all the features now. Um, the bigger shock again for a lot of people will be that it's not going to be available on day one with the game. It's going to launch two weeks after GTA 5 comes out on September the 17th. You know, hold your horses. The reason is essentially Rockstar want to make sure it's up and running smoothly and they want to give you time to absorb the single player universe. The single player universe that we've seen is huge. We've been talking about it for like nine months. You know, I think having a two week period of grace is quite nice in a way. It takes the pressure off. The better news again is GTA Online is free so that once you've um, you know, bought your copy of GTA 5 after two weeks um, that the GTA Online online mode will unlock and as we previously said that character um, space in the character selection wheel that appears on screen will unlock at the bottom and I guess that we can finally, finally, and this will mean a lot to people who listen to the show a lot, reveal the secret of AT3 Yeah. Um, because back as, back as, was it even the gameplay trailer that showed this? Oh, or even before that, it was, yeah. Uh, the, but a previous trailer had showed like an 83 next to a character number on the character selection wheel. That 83 was a countdown to the launch of GTA Online, and people at the time went, "This can't be right because the date isn't the same as the launch day of the game." Exactly, yeah. Because the the GTA Online, and I'm not, I'm not going to use the word mugs. It's a different experience. Launches two weeks after GTA 5. You know, it's it's. Big stuff. It's big ambition stuff from Rockstar. It's, it's huge, and 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 in fact, it's so huge and such a sea change for them that uh, in many ways it, it, it's actually quite a challenge to communicate exactly what it's about and to put everything we saw down onto paper. I mean, we furiously, obviously, made notes, and uh, and Rockstar have provided us with some literature to read over and that kind of stuff. And obviously, we had 
what uh, Leslie Benzie's talked to us about as well. Um, but th there's so much information. I think that's perhaps one of the reasons why Rockstar uh, wanted us to go up to North to see the game in the flesh and to chat to the game uh, people behind the game is so that we could get it from the horse's mouth. Yeah, and I think you know Rockstar themselves are really acutely aware of like they've got to communicate this in the right way, and they want people to understand quite the scope and ambition of this world. GTA Online isn't something they've just thought about for GTA Five. It's been like in inception for absolutely years. It's something they've always wanted to do. And I think they fully see this as, you know, eventually uh, a, like a franchise or a separate thing to the core, maybe the core GTA experience that will exist for all time. So you've got to think now, this is a really big deal. So if you launch a character in the sort of GTA Online, he's, he, he could be living for, you know, in, in you know, for all time effectively. Um, we don't know the scale of it yet. And Rockstar are going to announce more plans. It's going to grow. It's going to build, um, you know, more exciting top line stuff is that essentially you play it within a 16 player universe at any one time but all of your stats and details are saved within those interactions and it all contributes to like a global leaderboard of stats that rank essentially everything but the core mechanics will be like RP which is reputation points mm. which is the core you know thing you're accruing and unlocking all the time plus essentially much like GTA 5 the single player game it's all about earning money and you earn money and you spend, and there will be no shortage of things to spend on in GTA Online. And that was abundantly clear in the demo we were shown. I mean, is there anything else you want to get across top line, Tim? Yeah, I mean, a, uh, just a couple of things. One is that uh, G the relationship between GTA 5 and GTA Online is that GTA, you know, as Dan alluded to, you know, Leslie Benzies told us that they'd been wanting to do this for years. Now, GTA Online, the reason it exists now is because they finally had... The, the technology and they finally had the map and the world I guess built in GTA 5 to allow them to do GTA Online. Now GTA Online shares the same map as GTA 5 but it exists differently you know it's, it's parallel to that it has its own missions yeah. it has it has its own it has its own characters its own world all, all that kind of stuff so it is separate but it uses GTA 5's technology as a jumping off point yeah and you've got to look at it as whilst it launches using the world that gta 5 is built in that fully modeled los santos and again we saw that running without compromising gta online in the fullness of time that will not be the only location that gta online is setting that's the scale of this universe and like quite the ambition of what they're trying to achieve now again you know I'm, I'm scared of overselling it or trying to make it sound like something it isn't a lot of the mechanics within it we have seen in different ways in different games throughout the years but it's the way that Rockstar are bringing it all together in you know let's face it the obscenely attractive GTA universe and doing all that great stuff it's just really exciting and I think it's that it's that ambition to bring all those elements together into one game and there's all sorts of questions that again we know some of the answers we'll be releasing them in further shows you know, what happens when it goes online? What happens further beyond that? How do your stats carry over? How does it link to the single player game? Now again, and what we can say is that GTA Online exists essentially as a kind of prequel to GTA 5. Yep. As in, it's set you know, within the GTA 5 world with its, its characters and universe, but it, it's before the events of the single player GTA 5 story. Characters from GTA 5 will appear yep. in GTA Online, but you don't play as them there's definitely some mystery around quite how they appear but we've got some clues and hints we can give you um, but essentially you'll be setting up your own character and launching them into this universe and growing their stats growing their money working with other people and I say everything you can do in GTA 5 you can do in GTA Online so I'll bullet point some of the key things you can do um, that includes things like heists yeah. fully cooperative heists you can perform co-op missions you can perform gang attacks There'll be competitive activities like death matches, an impromptu death match. There'll be races. There'll be sports activities like you know tennis, golf, base jumping, shooting range, all those kinds of things. There'll be what's called ambient events like holdups of delivery stores. There's um, armored van robberies. There's crate drops. There'll be import and export missions where you're stealing cars. There's bounties where you can set bounties on other players for other people to claim. Now you'll have money, you'll be looking to spend things all the time. The money element is mind-blowing to the extent where if you know I went to the cash point in GTA Online holding like a million dollars, um, but I got attacked and killed at the cash point, I'd drop a massive portion of my money and you could steal it. Mm. So carrying cash around is dangerous and you need to use the banks to deposit your cash. Yeah, you have to use banks now. Yeah, and you can invest that cash using the stock market even in the online mode. It's mm. absolutely incredible, the depth. You can buy 
huge numbers of property. We're going to outline all the manner of property that we've seen. And again, within that, there's huge scope for customization. Um, you can also perform betting to bet on the outcome of competitive modes. There's huge amounts of customization and all this stuff's gonna be revealed with the GTA Online Creator, like your appearance, you can customize your vehicles, you can customize your weapons. Plus, if that wasn't enough, and believe me, that really is, not only will Rockstar be constantly providing content, you will be able to create your own content and missions yourself using a set of tools that will start off relatively basic but will grow and grow and grow. And again, there's all sorts of questions. There's a question of, you know, will Rockstar provide all of this free for all, free for all time? We don't know, as in this literal answer to that. Mm. I would be very surprised, and this is me speculating, if they can afford to run GTA 5 Online free, or GTA Online free for all time based on a one-off fee for GTA 5. Seems unlikely. But what is true is that when you buy GTA 5, you do instantly get access to GTA Online. Mm. So... You know, this, the scope is absolutely mind-blowing. So should we, I mean, shall we go through the demo and the experience yeah. of Rockstar North? Yeah, let's talk about it, Dan. So we, we got there. Uh, we uh, got into Edinburgh late on a, on a Tuesday evening, and then uh, we stayed over, uh, met the guys from Rockstar. Then the next day, we went up to uh, Rockstar North. Um, now, Rockstar North, uh, like all Rockstar properties we've been to, is hidden away. Uh, not They don't sort of advertise themselves too much. But uh, they're just off Prince's Street in, in Edinburgh. Really smart offices. We went up there. And then what happened, Dan? Oh, well, the big thing I would say is whilst it is hidden, it's not so hidden that you can't actually see the Rockstar North sign from the street. You can if you go up to the glass. Yeah, yeah I, I, I always thought it was like literally an unmarked building. You know, yeah. that you had to know a secret code and do the handshake. But yeah. you can see it. And I think if you lived in Edinburgh, you wouldn't know where the offices are. Mm. Getting in the office is a different thing because yeah. there's all sorts of glass barriers when we were in like lots of different security so yeah. you know we went in with a, like a small party of other journalists uh, we were certainly the only uk journalists there um and so we were the only online show there yeah uh, you know the online youtube show there to see it um so yeah we went up uh, we sat in a little holding pen while they got everything ready then we got taken upstairs and this bit was amazing because we actually got to walk through rockstar north mm. and like rockstar north itself is you know hey it's a smart modern uh, white plexiglass open plan developers building. You know, if, uh, you, you've only got to look at pictures of developers at work. It's a big open plan office. The difference is the guys there aren't like graying men fiddling around with spreadsheets or coding. You know, really dull stuff. There was as far as the guy could see, monitor upon monitor upon monitor of people playing, testing, and debugging GTA Five. Yeah. It was like you say, it was like a house of mirrors or something. Yeah. Was, you almost felt sort of guilty looking at the screen because uh, like I, lo lots of people looked at us like. Well, who, who are these guys? You know, wandering in off the street, looking at this highly, highly secret game. It was like being the architect in the Matrix or something. <laughs> you could just see all these visions of GTA Five, and like on one screen you'd see like someone doing target range practice, another one you could see Michael's house, on another one I could see a guy fight, piloting a jet fighter through a canyon. Yeah, it was like, oh, should I see this stuff? And it's like, yeah, I'm seeing it. Yeah, uh, and you're clocking it, and it's so exciting, you know. And you, then you go, you wound in upstairs. Um, past the building, I've, I find it, I quite liked it. In, in our previous lives as uh, UK magazine editors, you could see some of the magazines we edited on the yeah. newsstands there. Yeah. That was really sweet. Uh, so we went in. What was super nice as well is that you know, Rockstar have listened to the show. That's brilliant. Like we're delighted that Rockstar have listened to the yeah. show. Everyone there was super lovely. It was really nice to introduce ourselves, and it was weird because a lot of people were like. Hey, we know who you are. Yeah. And it's like, oh, this is weird. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So they sat us down in the demo room. We had three TV screens uh, on the go at the same time. We sat down. Uh, we got introduced to Leslie Benzies and a couple of the other guys from the team um, who were going to demo the game for us. And, uh, and and then the demo kind of kicked off. We had a bit of spiel from, from the guys at, at Rockstar before about what they were trying to achieve with... GTA Online and that kind of stuff, and I think you outlined that at the start of the show, uh, Dan, unless you want to add something. Uh, no, as I say, we basically sat down in a big row, there's three big screens in front of us. I think at the start, th there was like one active screen we were looking at mm. in the centre, that was where GTA 5 was running. First thing that struck me was, you know, visually, it just looks like GTA 5. It looks like the GTA 5 that I'd, you know, I'd seen with Tim when we went to see the uh, demo quite yep. a few months back. It looked exactly like that there was mm -hmm. no compromise no holding back now you know there were guys sat either of either side of us who were playing the game and later on there were people who were not even in the building or not in our room playing with us but yeah it starts with um yeah one of the guys next to us said you know 
ready guys, let's go. Mm. He was talking into a headset. You could hear the beeping of a, of a phone. And he was using his in-game smartphone to activate his contacts. Yeah. And this is like, again, this is available in single player. You'll have contacts in your smartphone. He went through his contacts and like literally rang up his friends to play GTA Online. And you'll be able to ring people. If you're playing online, you'll be able to ring your, like, people who are currently in single player to come into the game with you yeah so again it's a bit like jacking into the matrix you know but it's really exciting using that seamless transition between that's right the two. i mean that explains why the fourth character was such a prominent part of the the character wheel in single player is because you will be able to access your multiplayer avatar as easily as you can access franklin michael and trevor in the single player yeah and so like you know again he rang his friend and he saw him ring him and he went hey how's it going he went good yeah how are you and he goes i'm waiting for you to pick me up you know, so we can do a hold up together. Can you come and get me? He's like, cool. So he goes, yeah, okay. I'll set a waypoint on the map and we'll agree to me. Now, I believe at this stage you could see his avatar, his in-game character, talking. What was really impressive was that as he was talking in real life using his headset, the in-game character was moving his lips. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That so, was a nice touch. Yeah, and it wasn't like absolutely seamless, but it was it was really good and impressive. So you could see the guy talking in time with your actual voice. There's a lot more to say about voice. We'll get to that in a minute. So, yeah. Um, they're in the car. The guy comes to pick him up, and you see him on the one screen, like, arrive and pull into view. Like, you can see the other screen working, and the guy's driving around the streets, and that's his view. The other guy sat there waiting, and eventually the two intersect, so their views are the same. Yeah, one of them was driving a vapid Dominator, uh, and they I've noted this down. They met on Vespucci Boulevard. Ah, oh, very good. So, uh, and I think we had a bit of what sounded like Waylon Jennings from was, the... Uh, or yeah. was it? Well, it, it was Waylon right, Jennings. Okay. And that's brilliant because what it was, whilst they were discussing, hey, you're playing Waylon Jennings in the car as they were driving to the hold-up, uh, the other guy said, oh, you know, I hate Waylon Jennings. What are you doing? Uh, what about this? And one of you can act as, like, like real life, act as the radio DJ in the car. Yeah. So, like, you know, while, say, Tim drives... I could fiddle around with the radio so we have different tunes on. Yeah. So the guys from Rockstar were chatting as they were fiddling about with the radio. Again, we got to see the, the radio selection wheel and lots of things we're not allowed to talk about. Mm. But there's a lot of channels on there and you're going to like them. Yeah. <laughs> I, won't, I won't say anything more on for, for yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what happened next? They were going to go and do a gas station robbery, Dan. So... Uh, like in the single player game, uh, when you do a robbery or a heist or whatever you want to call it, you can you can flip on a mask. Yeah, and he go went, all right, mate, masks on, yeah. So they got their masks on, and you can use this uh, the, what they what I call the interaction menu, and this allows you to change your glasses, your hats, your masks, and a mask will have an effect on your wanted level. So like if, for example, you perform a hold up whilst wearing a mask, and then you later on remove the mask it will drop your wanted level because you're no longer recognisable as that character. Yeah. So it'll take a star or something off the wanted level. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, the guys chatted to each other talking about, we've got to do this quick, you know, we've got to make a quick getaway. They go into the store, they go up to the guy, holds him up, holds his pistol up, and he, the guy goes like, hey, you know, what are you doing? And then he goes, the guy, you know, the guy holding him up went, put the money in the bag, this is a stick up, come on. And then as he's doing it, he goes, quicker, quicker. He, that, that's the guy playing it saying that, not the in-game character. Yes, this is the guy playing it saying it. But the in-game character is sort of mouthing yeah, it, repeating yeah, yeah. it. Now, it, we thought it was for show that he was shouting at the mic to make it seem more exciting than it was. But the in-game AI will respond to your urgency in shouting. Yeah. And so the, the shopkeeper was shoveling the money in the bag a little bit faster yeah. because you were basically telling him to hurry up and waving the gun the, around. Basically, the more aggressive you are, the more scared the guy will, will get and the quicker they'll fill the bag. Yeah, that's it. And then eventually his buddy shouted, like, let's go, the cops are coming. And he, and he was like, careful, take a left, more incoming. So the guy piled into his car. Then they were out trying to escape the cops detection zones now we see, yeah we've seen that a little bit in the single player haven't we already this this kind of idea of they're sort of metal gear solid kind mm. of triangles of detection uh, and you know we saw it in the single player demo when I, I think Franklin had to go and lose the cops at the end of that blitz play mission by hiding under a motorway underpass uh, and you know we're seeing it again here and again, you know, the, the raid, you've got to stay out of these zones of detection in the front of the cars, which is visible on the radar for a set amount of seconds to evade the cops. Um, we could hear on the stereo again, it was uh, the Hood Gone Love It track from Franklin's yeah. um, you know, character trailer. 
you could see the cars like bombing through the streets, winding its classic great GTA graphics. Sirens are blazing. It's really loud. And eventually, like our guys got away, they got to safety. And this is another interesting point: is that after you've got to safety and you're chatting, you know, as the two online characters together, you the guy who did the job or the hold up decides who gets the cash. Yeah, it's completely up to him to split the cash. So I could have said to Tim. You know, Tim, I held the gun, you fannied around in the car, your driving was a disaster, and I'm going to give you $10. Yeah. And you'd be like, what? Mm. You know, like, you've taken $10,000, and I've got 10 I don't think that's fair. Yeah. So, again, that in itself opens up a dynamic where possibly Tim might decide to start shooting my ass and yeah, steal my right. money. Yeah, that, has, that does lead to interesting scenarios where people might feel like you've betrayed them. And... You know, we again it echoes some of the themes in the single player, and you can see that the single player and the the multiplayer uh, are very closely aligned in a lot of ways. And and uh, that you know, you can see that if you let people down and and don't give them their you know reward in the single player, then that that'll have a, a consequence. But it'll have possibly an even more direct consequence in multiplayer because the guy can literally turn; he's not scripted. He can yeah. literally turn around and shoot he's, you in the face. He's a human being with yeah. a set of interactions, and he can do this stuff. Um, so then we went from, you know, just performing this hold up. We were like, hey, let's go and check out our apartment. So um, we then we popped into the interaction menu again and you can set your mood. So when you're playing online, you can decide to like show to the world. I'm happy. I'm angry. I'm sad. Mm. That again is available from a menu. It's a little bit like something you might see in Sony's uh, interesting home project. And I use the word interesting with apostrophes. Um, so then we went and we dropped the guy off his apartment. And now again, the apartment you have is entirely financially based. If you've got loads of money, you can buy a better better crib. Now, the really good cribs have private garages. Mm. And the, the crib we saw had a 10-car, like, underground garage. G garages range from 2-car size to 10-car size, I think, don't they? Right. So, and, and you're right, the guy, the guy had a 10-car garage, but I think it only had three vehicles in it. Yes, it did, yeah. And it was spotless. It looked like a car showroom, didn't it? Yeah, it looked like a sort of uh, show reel from the Apple factory or something. <laughs> yeah, it's all like right. glimmering plexiglass, beautiful, immaculate, uh, customised motors in there. And again, you know, the the more cars you have, the more you can customise them, the more chance you have winning races. And I mean, you can use them as a sort of showroom because as you go around your garage, stats appear above the car telling you what, yeah. the, you know, how the car breaks down and all that sort of stuff. And of course, stats will change as you add turbos and mods and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's it. And he says, like, we're going to do a job. Uh, you can do a race uh, at any point in the game. So you pick the right car for racing or yeah. whatever it was he was going to do. Um, and then again, you set a waypoint for the race, don't you, to say we're yeah. going to race by here. Just one thing, that when he picked the car for this for, for, for the race, uh, he got into a convertible. Uh, do you remember what happened? He popped down the, yeah. the, the, hood, the roof of his car and it went... It was just a nice little touch. The scope for showing off, like the customization, a lot of it is just going to be ludicrous stuff to look like a badass. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm yeah. really pro it. Uh, and again, w well, w w there's a little thing you do later on that will tie with the ability to fl flip down your roof. That's really fun. So they were all like, lots of guys were talking. There's lots of banter before the waypoint race. They're like, here we are, let's do this. And then like you know, the markers on the map you see are where you trigger the missions from. Mm. So they set up an impromptu race, Dan. I, I spotted while they were they were there or thereabouts that it was it looked to be in and around Vinewood Boulevard, which of course we saw quite a lot of in the micro yeah. segment of the single player demo. I saw the Doppler cinema and all that sort of, sort of stuff that we saw yeah. around you know around the um, around the demo. And and so they yeah they set a GPS waypoint. Uh, they triggered an impromptu race, and they had a race. Yeah, they had a race, and it was just like you know what you'd expect a high-speed street race to be. No graphical compromise. Uh, what strikes you is the real like it's the blurring neon at night in Vinewood, and we said this on a previous episode. Yeah, that pace and it's probably feel. worth pointing out that this was all. Was it all at night, or was it just this section? Uh, certainly, night? this section struck me as at yeah. night. I think so, I, I can't remember. Some of the other stuff was at day. I think. Yeah. Uh, so it was. Yeah, had that real like you know long time listeners to the show will know that we talked a lot about. That sort of, as Dan says, that sort of neon streaked quality that the Vinewood area has and the Boulevard has, and it definitely, definitely had that kind of feel to it. And eventually, someone won. And when you win a race, uh, you know, you get to say hey, you won. You get given uh, RP points. I think he, out, I think he won eighty dollars as well for winning it. Oh, eighty dollars. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a great amount of cash, but you do win cash. And again, like you can place bets on the outcome of races and things like that, so you can actually increase your stake if you're really confident. 
And I mean, um, what's worth pointing out as well is that that eighty dollars doesn't sound like a lot. But then this was a very very basic race yeah. that they showed. You know, you can build more complicated races, more complicated missions using the creator later on down the line. And obviously, you can attribute the more complicated they are the more money they're going to be worth. And like all missions have a mission marker which you can drive up to or walk through to activate, but it's also going to be possible to active, act, you know, enter some key game modes just through quick match menus. Mm. So they're going to give you both ways to get into it. It's really multi-access. What they showed us next was like, it talked about if you create a mission, the marker that appears, and it was like a sort of blue transparent dome, wasn't it, that appeared on the... Yeah, in the, in the literature that they sent us, they referred to it as a corona, I think. Okay, a Corona. So there we go, not to be confused with a delicious, cool beer. Yeah. And it says, um, yeah, and it, if you enter the, if you create a mission, it shows your name, your details, your score, and it also shows like a, a ranking for the mission, like how many people liked it. Yeah. So again, you'll be able to like cherry pick the missions you fancy that other people are liking. There'll be ability to sort them. So yeah, so they met up and then they agreed to do um, like a group robbery of bikes from something called the Maibatsu Factory? Yeah. Yeah, the mission was called the Maibatsu Factory Steal. They were going to uh they were going to steal a shipment of bikes uh from the factory. The factory was super heavily guarded, although not as super heavily guarded as a mission we'll get onto in a, in a second, but it was guarded enough. And they had to come at it from different angles. And from different heights. Yeah, and it wasn't just... The, there was the two of them we'd done the hold-up together. Now, at this point, they went, we're going to need backup for this. We're yeah. going to call in two of our friends. So on the screens, you know, on the side of our actual vision, the two more screens lit up, and there were two more guys active in the game. So there was, like, four of them in an active posse at this stage. Uh, and, like, the lead guy was talking about... Um, he says, we're going to need a lookout, a sniper. We're going to need a couple of transporters, which I guess means drivers. Yeah. And he says, hey, do you want to come with me and be a transporter? You can be the lookout. Can yeah. you navigate? And it's, again, this sense of... And, again, this is what we've talked about on the show and we predicted. You'll be able to choose people based on their abilities and assign them to tasks according to what you want to achieve. Now, again, it says, like, it talks about the transition from picking the mission to entering it. It's absolutely painless. It was seamless. It felt like a similar thing to um, almost like jumping in the, doo -doo -doo, the what, radar. What I also liked about it was that there was no... I mean, there will be the opportunity to just go out all guns blazing and kill people, I guess, within the world, if you're that way inclined. But what I liked about it was there was a real emphasis on the sharing of resources, the sharing of expertise. Mm. There was a real sense of... Uh, you get from, like, MMOs, you know, that sort of real sense of sharing the world, not just destroying it and yeah. destroying other people. And you can play co cooperative or, or like a real awful person if you want. But what's nice as well before the mission is if you've got a brilliant cache of weapons, you can share them out amongst your friends and go, you have my brilliant Uzi, you have the shotgun. You know, you, you can give people you trust equipment to get the job done. And in fact, that's exactly what they did, I think, before they went in. When someone shared, one of the guys shared a sniper rifle, they shared ammo, uh, other weapons. I think they even shared... No, I think Leslie Benzies told us that you could also share cash as well. So, yeah. so you know, there was that. There's that real kind of emphasis on approaching it the right way, doing it the right way, and you know, getting friends you trust in to do this job. So eventually, they went to this abandoned warehouse. It was kind of in like an industrial district, kind of downtowny felt to yeah, me. Yeah, like a yeah, definitely. It was just like classic generic warehouse sort of style material, and they were approaching it from like higher up, looking down. And they were th debating the right way to approach it. And so, the, you know, the guy was saying, look, hey, look, from where we are, we can get a good look at the entrance from here. The other guy said, yeah, it looks clear. Let me know when you're in place. And they're all moving independently, getting into slots. And the one guy went, I've got a guard. He goes, I could take him out now, as in with a sniper shot. But in fact, I'm going to go up close and personal and get him. No, this was interesting, yeah. Yeah, so you saw him sort of like creep up behind, you know, again, like, Decent animation, not the best that you've ever seen, but good animation. Yeah. Creeps up behind and then, like, you know, muffled the guy and didn't he shank him or something? I'm pretty sure he knifed him in the neck. Yeah. But uh, I've got that written down, but I, I maybe maybe just choked him out. And I looked like, it looked like there was a, a little cheeky knife in the neck. Yeah, it looked like a knife in the neck, which again, now they said, well, why would you do that apart from the fact it's like a cool thing, you know, to do it stealthily? Well, the game takes into account how much noise you're making. Yeah. So that, you know, if someone someone could, and you can play on this, one of you could make a noise on a different part of the map, distract people towards him to clear a path for the other people. It's really so, quite well thought out. Yeah, yeah, it's really well thought out, so you can use that to creep past. Now, 
after a bit, it went wrong. It went, it went yeah. horribly wrong. And then he shouts at, you know, the guy doing the heist shouts at, and he goes, oh my God, they've, you know, they've spotted me. I need some covering fire. So the next thing you know, this this shot's coming in, left, right, and center. There's heads popping, there's sniping. Uh, and they were like coordinating as they did it. So they were like, you take the left, I'll take the right. You know, cover yeah. me behind you, coming in on your left. Watch out behind the trailer. Are you guys here? And it was like you would play a, a co-op death match. Yeah. You know, you're all trying to coordinate at the same time. Yeah. And he was like, behind you, give me cover. And he goes, jump in, I'll cover you. And again, it was all that sort of thing, coordinating all the way through until they cleaned out all of the men methodically and got hold of the bikes. Yeah, I think with, with the bikes in the tr- in a truck, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, in a truck, yeah. yeah. So, And then up, up on screen it said, deliver truck to Madrazo's lockup. So uh, Madrazo presumably is obviously the, the the sort of mastermind behind it or the guy you're working for. And they and they drove the truck out. But of course, they were being pursued as they were driving the truck out uh, by the guys you'd stolen the, the bikes from. Uh, so we had two guys. We had in our four man team. We had two guys in the truck and, and two in a in a sort of accompanying car. Yeah. One, one of which was shooting. Uh, and that that sort of pursuit went on. For, for a while, and you know, the, the the ultimate aim was to protect the truck, pre, you know, prevent the the guys getting too close to it, prevent it getting destroyed, uh, and eventually, you know, they they wound their way uh, out of the city towards Dan the wind farm that we've seen so often in the trailers and in the in the demos. Yeah, as you sort of head like north easterly out of the Los Santos city, and you head up towards like. Uh, you know Blaine County and Sandy yeah. Shores and the Alamo Sea it was kind of out towards that way we, we've all talked about the wind farm it's, it's there in previous screenshots they were out in that area it's really exciting the chase you know as I thought like it was just the idea that you were you know really properly cooperating and it was like shouting the SUV's tracking us you've got to get a shot on him and as they were driving you were like shooting him as he went and I just thought that was really high speed felt very filmic you know very exciting yeah it did uh, so at the end when the mission is completed they got a 25 grand Reward and uh, 1250 uh, RP to go with it. So, but, you know, pretty big numbers. And yeah. you know, as the as as we said earlier, the guy who set up the mission, the guy who instigated it, will have to then split the money. Yes, yeah, so we decided to split the money. I thought this was a really cute touch. After they finished the mission, one of the guys says, "Oh, I've left my car back in town. Um, could, <laughs> yeah. you, could you give me a lift back to the city?" Uh, and then the uh, the guy in the car who's only got a two seater just went oh yeah 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 in fact I've got something for you and like he um, the guy wanders over yeah the guy wanders over and then what did he do He, uh, the guy in the car flipped in the bird didn't he yeah he flipped in the bird and sped off <laughs> yeah. uh, so that, and left him out yeah he went see you and like laughing so yeah he, again and we were told that in the menus you've got a set of different animations you can choose so your character might have like a trademark you know screw you guys whatever it is and this made me again think of Playstation Home and the infamous running man, infam- in, you know, animation. But it mm. might be quite amusing mid-mission to flip someone in the bird as you drop a rocket on their head yeah. or something exciting happens. Just another layer of customization. It's not too bad for the guy who got left out in the stick, so because you you can just phone phone up your a guy you employ and he'll drive out a car for you to pick you up. So. Yeah, or even the like standard taxis as we've seen in previous yeah. GTAs will take you back into town. You know, or you could walk if you're a maniac. So there's always that option. Now we went from there and then we were taking a look at something called the feed which is where all your information in the game is fed through and it was described as like almost like GTA Online's version of Twitter. Yeah, in fact I think they directly referenced Twitter when they were talking about like, it. It didn't function exactly like that or look exactly like it but all your messaging communications was done through it. So that's where text messages appear, all your invites for games appear. You can hit buttons and jump in, your emails appear there, messages from the social club. You know, it really is everything you need to know for that world appears in the feed. Now, there's all sorts of cool stuff they talked about that I thought was really exciting, one of which was the idea of insuring your car. Yeah, so earlier on we heard about how you could uh, put all your money in the bank and keep, and that was the way to keep it safe. In, in the same way, in the, in, on that same level of being quite sensible... It's sensible to insure your car, and the reason for that is because if your car get if you've spent a lot of money doing up your car, spending tons on mods and turbos and paint jobs and, and wheel rims and all that kind of stuff, and then it gets blown up or some guy comes along and steals it, that's going to be pretty upsetting, yeah, I yeah, imagine. Yeah, yeah. By insuring it, even if it gets stolen or gets blown up, you can then replace it for a small premium. 
which is a really nice touch. What it also means is that when you go and do jobs with other mates and they decide that their vehicle is the best vehicle for doing that particular mission, you can leave your car anywhere in the world and know that it's going to be fine. You know, even yeah. if someone steal, ends up stealing it, which, as you'll find out in our interview with Leslie Benzies tomorrow, he says is you know, generally probably not going to be the case. But even if they do steal it, you can still replace that car and it will come back to you for a small premium in the same way as it was before. So it pays to use insurance, a life lesson for us all. Uh, yeah, being a grown-up. Yeah, so uh, there we go. And we went back now to uh, one of the nice apartments. And uh, whilst we were doing that, another guy went to the bank and this is where they explained the concept of holding money and the danger associated with it, where if you were like carrying a million dollars in your pockets virtually and you got killed, a big portion of that money would spill out onto the street yeah. and people could steal it. So essentially we were told you need to strike a balance between keeping cash in hand to get things done day to day in GTA Online and going to the ATM and paying it in. When they went into the uh, bank, they found uh, there were three options, deposit, withdrawal, or transaction log. Uh, and it was nicely the Mays Bank of Los Santos, which people who uh, know the game and know the universe will know. Mays Bank is that big sort of uh, white building with a sort of crane-shaped mm. roof. Um, and then we went back to the apartment, Dan. Yeah, back to the apartment. Now, his apartment was basically beautiful it, it looked for, for, for a point of reference it looked a lot like the apartment you see at the very very end of the gameplay demo uh, where he sort of looks out over the world it had that it, it had that big window in exactly the same way it wasn't the same apartment apparently that we saw in this demo that yeah. was in the gameplay demo because I asked about it but he was he was he could look out and he did say to one of his friends hey guys you know they buzzed to come into his apartment from outside and he let them in and they, in, when they came up and they were like wow nice gaff really cool and they looked out through the glass and, and he said look you can see the Vinewood sign from my apartment and you know you could and it was beautiful and in fact he was sorry go on no I was just going to say one of the other things was before they came up when they buzzed his door I don't know whether you remember he had a access to a CCTV yes. camera yeah. that, that shows you who's buzzing your door so you don't have to let it you know you, there's not going to be a circumstance where someone buzzes at your door, you let them in, they come in shooting. You can see who's there, and you can ask them who they are before they enter your building. I guess we didn't investigate that, but there was the idea of, like, if you don't let them in, can they get in? Now, could it be a case of people knocking at your door going, like, you know, Tim, I'm coming to get you, I want my money, and you're <laughs> upstairs going, uh, yeah, I'm just getting it, like, loading up the rocket launchers yeah. and what have you. Well, and again, thing. could I approach, you know, from the plate glass window in a helicopter and try and shoot you away, Matrix-style? There's so many exciting scenarios yeah. within the world and you're still talking to each other and it could be betrayal amongst friends, collaboration amongst friends. It might be that, you know, a, a group of bad guys are trying to steal your money in your apartment and you're in trouble. So, you know, I might ring Tim offline and go, Tim, you've got to come online with me now. Bring the chopper and the crew because I'm under assault and all our money's in peril. Yeah. There's so many exciting scenarios. Yeah. This is where it's so exciting. Um, we don't know and we don't know how it's going to develop or how it will work but you know, these are the kind of things you can think about beyond just what we saw and of course you can access that CCTV feed through your television a television which was playing inside the apartment while we were in there uh, it was showing Weasel News Dan and what was on Weasel News? well this again ties into something we've speculated to a large extent in that we know that the police we know that the police choppers in the game have got a camera on the front mm. of them now again I speculated those are cameras that are used to film the world. You can watch other people in GTA Online with wanted levels being chased by the police live on TV, on, on like Weasel News. And it was basically like police camera action or police camera stop or whatever yeah. it's called. And you just watched it live on your set. Now, it seems to select people who have got a certain wanted level, doesn't it? I don't yeah. think it's... Uh, and is it random? Uh, I, don't, I don't know how it picked it. <coughs> but what, what was true is that you could watch... It's again, this is where it's completely mad. You could watch the TV in your apartment and see people being chased down the street by a helicopter and police, then actually look out of the glass of your apartment and see it happening live. Yeah. So you're like, within a virtual world, virtually watching something happen. Yeah, it's really clear. Absolutely mind-blowing. So on the news channel, I also noticed that there was a question that, new, that Weasel News were posing, and the question was, are violent video games to blame? Yeah. which I thought was quite a nice Yeah, it's time. just that great satire again. We also saw um, another TV show. It looks like TV shows are back, and there was one with, like, a detective, like a 1930s detective animal, or I, he I can't was a remember. a moose, I think. And I think 
I think the uh, the the, the sign on his door yeah. said Moosehead Investigations. I think we asked Leslie Bendis about it when we interviewed him, but he he wouldn't he wouldn't tell us. So uh, so, but I think it said Moosehead Investigations. So yeah, again, expect a huge density of, of TV programming, even within GTA Online. It's it's incredible, you know. So we went from yeah, the guys met up. They were in the apartment. They were chatting. Uh, he talked about the Vinewood sign. Then he said, you know, right, we're going to go now into the big event. A heist mm. a coordinated for player heist now these heists are similar they or they can be similar to the ones in single player they will have up to I think Leslie Benzie's quoted 20 different components yeah uh, so they're big this one I don't know where it ranked on that scale but um, but it was a big it was a big heist the but the heist basically was there's a Titan which is a as people will know a big 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 plane uh, at the airport being guarded by Merriweather. I'm not sure who Merriweather is, Dan. No, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if they're like a security organisation or a private firm or what, you know, whatever they are, whether they're a military organisation. I don't know. A- apologies if everyone does know and it's in fact part of GTA law. It's just a gap in my information yeah. right now. But yeah, they had to steal it from Merriweather. The airport was the big main airport on the southern tip of the city as well established we've seen screenshots a bit we talked about it in mapping shows so they had to go down there so there's a lot of planning to be done so they talked about you know saying hey this is a tough job we need to call the other guys in so they got four of them together they were talking they said look we need a chopper to get to the airport you know has any of you have any of you got them and again different characters or different ones of your friends some of you might have access to choppers so you need to call in someone who can call in different vehicles this is when you invite people, you can see their skills, whether they're good at driving, whether they're good at flying, whether they're a good shooter, whether they've got access to boats, to helicopters, to planes. You know, it's got all those different things when you choose who's going to come in your crew with you. Yeah. So they found a guy who had a chopper and then their, their big discussion was, right, we need to tool up for this job. We're going to ammunition. Yeah. So they went to the big ammunition store, as we've picked out previously on the show, near the Mile High Club, mm. as seen on a previous screenshot. So they went down there, and the brilliant thing about that ammunition is there's a helipad on the roof. Useful. Yeah, Very so dead useful. useful. So two of the guys were on the roof, landed, and the others are actually in the shop buying weapons. Mm. Um, and again, it's fantastic. It was saying that, you know, the guy who's got access to choppers rings a lifestyle company called Pegasus, yeah. who sorted out the chopper for him, and they can deliver your private jets and helicopters to your, like, private air pads. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's mind blowing, really. Isn't yeah, it? it is, and it, this is why it's such a it's, this episode so long because it's so much to describe. Yeah, and we thought about different ways to try and do this, but we're just trying to do the best we can to relay the volume of information. I bet Rockstar have thought the same. Yeah. So yeah, and different vehicles then can take different amounts of people. So for example, some of the jets in the game can carry up to ten people, and our bigger helicopters can carry different amounts of people. Like the more you spend on your, your, your vehicles the more you can carry to a job think about performing and again a lot of the missions we saw weren't player versus player as in human being player they were like teams versus AI yeah. now you know could you have a 16 player squad taking on the mother of all AI flying in in your huge Titan yeah. bombers you know it's absolutely incredible yeah yeah and the scale and ambition is incredible so the Titan is hidden in an air, aircraft hangar at Los Santos airport yeah uh, the guy's Head in there in their chopper. Um, were they all in the chopper? Well, I, I think I think they were in the chopper, and they were like, you know, coming in in the chopper. They were like, we're going to go to the airfield, we're gaining some altitude, and it was the classic oh, GTA right, controls they were, for the yes, altitude. Of course they were. And he says we're going to get to a point, and he said to one of the other guys, "Can you set a waypoint for us all to meet on the ground?" So they did that whilst they were in the air. That's the waypoint, and he goes, "I'm going to get you up to the right altitude." And you're all going to jump out and parachute That's to the right. ground. Of course, I can then, forget. Yeah, and he says he goes, he goes. There we go. Look to your right. You can see the hangar. Second one in. Right. Place a waypoint. We'll meet there. And he went. Get ready. Three, two, one. Jump. And then they all jumped out. Yeah, it was, it was a lovely moment. Yeah, it's beautifully orchestrated, and they're all there in the air, like flying down in their own little way. They meet at the way, you know, they meet at the waypoint on the ground, and then they start talking about how they're going to approach it. So it was like, you know, okay, guys, there's a few of them in there. We've got to be really careful. And he goes, I'm going to go in first. I'm going to go in close and personal. And again, it was, I'm going to use a stealth tactic to, you know, go in and, you know, hurt the guy beyond all repair. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, and he goes, I can see the hangar. He goes, and the other guy was scared. The guy in the chopper could, he was up in the air still while three of them were on the ground, coordinating them. Because yeah. he had a better view. So he'd be, he'd be shouting down to them saying, 
I can see the hangar. He says, I can see a few Patriot cars either side of the target. There's loads of guys. You've got to be careful. And he goes, whoa, wait, I've spotted a truck blocking the path of the plane. You've got to move it out of the way. So they go in, and before you know it, it's an absolute... It's all kicking off. It's a, gu- it's a gun fest. Yeah, there are loads of people. I mean, we talked earlier about the, the bike factory steel, uh, that there were lots of people there, but there were t- tons of people here. And each mission is, is as I said earlier, is going to be you know guarded more heavily dependent on what the spoils are. And this one was you know guarded with pro-level guards. You know They, they, were, they were not going to let that plane plane guy out of that hangar very yeah, easily. Yeah, and guards kept appearing, so he'd be like, there's two guys, no, three behind you, guys on the left, one on the right, shoot, 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 look out behind you, he's behind you, keep them covered! And he was like shouting, he's like, okay, okay, and he's just non-stop shooting, blah, 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 guy from the helicopter trying to coordinate it all, and eventually they thinned out the volume of uh, yeah. guards incoming, one of them got into the Titan yeah. plane and started to like, it's like a great moment pulling yeah. out slowly along the floor and as he's doing it more guards are coming in and shooting and then the other guy on the ground's running going wait for me I'm going to catch you up <laughs> yeah. and the guy in the chopper was shouting like you've got to get in the plane we've got to pull off we've got to pull off yeah. and then like yeah he jumped in the plane the plane starts to pull off they go off onto the runway they're being shot at he's like going along the runway they're running out of tarmac so he's shouting like we're on the runway you've got to pull up pull up pulls up like, woof, you know, like massive elation moment, yeah. soundtrack changes, woof, and then it's like, okay, we're pulling up the landing gear, and you can see the landing gear flip up, and then they're like, right, we're in the air, we're off. And I think at this point, ambient, that, that sort of ambient soundtrack kind of kicked in, uh, but uh, yeah, we can't underline how great that moment was, because that is a big plane to get off a fairly short runway, and it was really tense kind of watching it as you were going to the end, you are going, they're not going to make it, they're not going to make it, yeah. they're not going to make it, and then they did, and that came out. And then, Dan, we watched as because we know the map pretty yeah. well by now. We watched its its kind of route. It sort of banked left, and yeah. then came along uh, Vespucci Beach yeah. area uh, along the sort of southern coast. Yeah, like Del Paro Pier, Del Paro Pier, Vespucci Beach along the southwestern tip of the coast. Continued on the western side of the coast, where it becomes you know it thins out from Los Santos City and the beach to like a more countryside style area. Then you arch around the left-hand side of the map to what felt like what we know is like the middle of the map on the very far west coast. Are we going to talk about now, Tim, what we saw there? I think we should. I think we should. Well, let's talk about it. That's that's previously an unknown area of the map. Like yeah. that's, that's something no one knew about. But again, we've, we've got clues and ideas. And what was confirmed to us and was pretty shocking was that on the far west coast of the map, there is a huge other like area of buildings yeah. now I, I couldn't really identify whether it was like an industrial complex a mini town I don't know what your feeling was and what it was we were too it was at night and we were too far really above the you know above the mm. land to tell for sure it looked like a decent sized town though or like you say it could be an industrial complex I don't think it was an I don't think it was like a military base or anything like that it looked yeah. much more like a sort of town now it wasn't part of Los Santos, or at least it didn't look like that. It was There was a very definite gap between when Los Santos ended and when this town began. Yeah, exactly. And so, well, we can't tell exactly what it is. It wasn't of the scale of Los Santos. No, not by a long It way. didn't look like a proper full-blown city. It just looked like slightly too big to be a building or two, but small enough. You know, similar-ish scale, but maybe even smaller than what we know of the area called Polito to the north, Yeah. which again is the subject of a heist we've talked about on previous episodes of GTA 5 O'Clock. Check them out. Um, yeah, and so that was like a revelation to us. And then we were taken along from there, sort of curving off to the right, if you imagine looking at the map south facing north, like top down, um, and we went along a river. Now again, you know, it wasn't made explicit to us, but because we know the map, we said, well, look, that's the Zancudo River, isn't it? Because that's tr- that trademark is like a snaking S, and it's quite low, and it's got sand flats. And in fact, this is brilliant. I, I give away one thing from our yeah. Leslie Benzies interview. Um, we chatted to Leslie Benzies, and um, we were discussing what we thought was the route out. Um, and we'd said to uh, Leslie Benzies, Okay, you know, we left Los Santos Airport, we went along past Vespucci Beach, we took the coast exactly as we described it. We went along the west, the western front, that was a new area. We followed the Zancudo River, then we went along to... And like the, the one of the PRs there was like, whoa, I'm not really sure we're, we're talking about any of those areas yet. Mm. Uh, but we said, well, it's not 
up for debate. It just is that thing. Yeah. We, we know it. And like Leslie Benzies laughed and he went like, you guys really know your shit, don't you? <laughs> yeah. That was really nice. It was like, yeah, great, Reassur- fantastic. Reassuring. This nine months of work was worth it yeah, for right. this one bit of kudos. So, um, yeah, it was fantastic. And then he landed on a, an airstrip in Sandy Shores. And it tied up everything we've mapped about the geography because he followed along, yeah, Zancudo River, went to Sandy Shores. We saw the Sandy Shores airstrip directly south of the Alamo Sea, as we've predicted, and it really was on the southern tip of it along that coast. Sandy Shores was really close. He came in and he landed. It was just nice to tie up all those little geographical loose ends we've been talking about. And that pretty much, Dan, was the end of the demo. Uh, That was the last bit they showed of the world. Um, there's tons and tons of little tiny things that we haven't uh, had the opportunity to talk about today which we will cover over the next couple of weeks oh so much so much we haven't talked about like what you can really buy with your um, with your money uh, the scope for customization the scope for creation and quite what the tools are and what you can do we haven't talked about how we think the world's going to expand we haven't talked about sports events we haven't really talked about truly how competitive multiplayer works. We haven't really talked about how the stats attract and what those stats are. We're going to talk about all these things. It's it's incredible. Like in a say, and this is scratching the surface, and we've got even more stuff to come. Um, we'll be back what tomorrow, tomorrow? Yeah. With an interview with Leslie Benzies. Yeah. Um, I guess before we we leap off, I guess we should talk about what we thought of it. Yeah. Like the impressions and yeah, like how well, it was. Well, you you kick off. Yeah, I mean. Essentially, this is the thing that was reassuring, was that we've been predicting on the show for six months plus, because again, I've researched it, I've looked into things Sam Hauser has said, and the way the world is moving, and I've said, look, the game's going to be a persistent MMO-style multiplayer. Mm. And, you know, again, people have variously mocked me on Twitter for saying that. We, we have had a lot of people on, on YouTube and on Twitter calling us out saying it absolutely will not be this and to be fair I could have been wrong we could have been wrong and, and you're right to say that but right now I'm going to blow the trumpet of victory because yes it was thank god you know, it, it wasn't guesswork though Dan it was never guesswork yeah exactly that's the thing that's frustrating it was never guesswork it was, it was just based on what's, what the houses have always wanted GTA to be and it was really nice to have that confirmed and to literally speak to, to Leslie Benzies and find out that that's always been their vision of course it has and to see it in action was just so exciting and as I said earlier on, it's not necessarily that what they're doing is something that nobody has ever done before, um, but it's piecing those elements together within the GTA universe, and that's one of the most rich, emergent game worlds there can be. Yeah. And they've got a total handle on like what's cool, what's fun, what people want from a modern online game. Um, all that's in there. So much stuff yet to be talked about. Visually, you know, it just looks like... GTA 5 um, we asked Leslie Benzies again what compromises are you making with the visuals and he essentially said well none you know we're not yeah. and again it was I, I thought at times when we were playing uh, or watching the heist missions I felt like the character models weren't as as high definition as, and as resolved as perhaps some of the cutscenes in the trailers have led us to believe. That, that's basically why I asked that question, and we'll talk about his answer tomorrow, but yeah. that's basically why I asked that question in interviews, because I also thought it perhaps wasn't quite as refined as, as even in the single player, but then I guess, I mean, I'm no programmer, but I guess, you know, like if GTA 5 single player is ultra ambitious, GTA Online is ultra, ultra ambitious, you know, the amount yeah. they're trying to do. Yeah. So there are going to be tiny compromises but by no means no means did the game look bad no not at all and it might just be a function of the scale because a lot of the missions we viewed down a sniper lens from a long distance so I think it's more a function of if you're up close next to a character model he obviously looks better that's just the way these things work so Mm. I do not want anyone to get under the impression that the visuals are bad because no they were actually hugely impressive given the scale of the ambition Um, I didn't feel like in any way that was an issue it's just something to note and again Mm. there was no visible slowdown there was no mess ups all the voice chat were really really well the menus seemed to work really well you could maybe say that you know the menus for someone seeing it for the first time 
maybe weren't as intuitive as maybe they could be. But again, I haven't actually played it. Yeah. You know, and I, I couldn't say. And, and again, I think what Rockstar are acutely aware of is the way they need to introduce you to the complexity of this world is gently and by the hand. Mm. So we'll talk about this more in the Leslie Benzies interview. But there is a set mechanic for introducing the world to you and for the way GTA Online works, especially as a prequel to the main GTA 5 story and world. Not all of it is known, but we've got some really cool stuff and we're going to do some more great speculation from that. But generally, like, wow, they're doing it now. The thing we thought, you know, might be at the tip of their ambitions, they're actually doing it. Where it goes in the future, I don't know. I think that at some stage it's going to transition to its own full-blown service. I think they're going to have to find ways to make that pay for itself. Yeah. And that may involve, you know, this is my speculation, things like there will be DLC packs, there might be microtransactions, there might be different stuff. I'm not saying that stuff's there off the bat. This mm-hmm. is purely my speculation. They're going to have to do that to make it work as an online service in full time because to provide something of this scale for free forever would be frankly insane to expect. Yeah, especially it. if they continue building that that yeah. on, you know, they've built the foundations of their online world and they are only going to continue building it and building it and building it and that costs money. Yeah, and to give so much away at the start for free on top of what is already the incredibly ambitious possibly generation defining single player game. It's pretty amazing. But you know, again, you can approach it different ways. You could go coolly and analytically. Oh, it's the, the, it's like the MMO function of this meets the thing of this, and this game did this multiplayer mode different, and Uncharted's done that. And you could do all those things, but it's seeing it all in the GTA world, alive and at once, and with all those cool things to buy and just being cool. It was really exciting. Um, one other thing I just want to add on the end is that even if, like me, you're not a massive, massive multiplayer game, you you prefer your kind of single player experiences. There's something for you in online because it's more styled, more like an MMO. You can go into that world by yourself and just wander around and soak it in, and and you know and enjoy it and be a part of it and contribute to it. And there's such an emphasis on sharing expertise and sharing spoils and sharing weapons and sharing vehicles and that sort of stuff that it's a much more uh, it's a perhaps less aggressive environment. Don't get me wrong; I'm sure there will be people on there being extremely aggressive. Yeah. But I think it's the, there's the potential for it to be le- much less aggressive, and therefore much less intimidating to people who perhaps don't like their multiplayer yeah. games. And like you can that. choose of the 16 players you're active with at any one time. You can kind of it will preferentially pick people who are your friends, your mates. You might want to collaborate and play it together in a cool, nice, sharing way. The other people it will bring into the world will be like of equivalent RP levels. Yeah. Um, so all those things are nice, they're managed. You can even choose if you want to like not play like an active role in the game, but play what in what they call this passive mode, just to get used to the world and things you can do in it. So you can't shoot or be shot whilst yeah. you're in that mode. We've got loads more answers like that for you in the forthcoming shows. You're going to have, I reckon, millions of questions. We've still got loads of questions. I would suggest firing them at us in the comments or following us on at GTA VO Clock and firing them to us that way. We're going to try and address as many as we physically can because we've got loads of answers. There's going to be stuff that we can't answer, but there's loads of stuff still to talk about. It's just oh, it's so deep and exciting to Okay, so we hope you've enjoyed the show today. Uh, That's just the tip of the iceberg. Like Dan says, over the next coming weeks, we are going to answer as many of your questions as we possibly can. Uh, We'll start not tomorrow, because that's Leslie Benzies, but next Wednesday, our normal time slot, we'll start answering those questions. So do shoot them out to us. We will have answers for you. And if you want more detail now, I would suggest going to CVG or computerandvideogames.com, the website. I have written... Uh, what we've described but with more detail more accuracy expanding on all the points we've made and it's probably like easier to soak up at your own leisure than us going mad and excited for an hour but yeah that's all on computerandvideogames.com and there will be more coverage on computerandvideogames.com throughout the week and beyond okay thanks for listening we hope you've enjoyed it we'll see you again soon (laughs) 